Welcome, this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a YouTube video about the Noble Active Implant. Now today we're going to talk about the locator attachment. This locator attachment is made for many different implant systems. The great thing about the locator implant attachments is it's a system. It's a system whereby you screw down the locator abutment on top of the implant, then you place some snaps in the denture, and then you're able to snap the denture down. And the patient can put this in, take it out, and it makes a very nice uh, type of system enabling them to get very good stability while at the same time maintaining nice cleansability. Now the locators are made by Zest Anchors and they manufacture them for a whole bunch of different types of implants. And as you can see, the Noble Active locator abutment is quite conical. It has to be conical because it needs to fit down inside the implant. And if we look at this up close, you can see this conical connection is going to fit inside the implant. And this creates this abutment platform shift, enabling the tissues to heal, maintaining bone, and creating a nice environment for healing and, and for cleansability. So you're able to screw this abutment down on top of the implant with a mandrel for the torque wrench. And so this is available from uh, Nobel BioCare. The abutment should be torqued down to 20 to 25 newton centimeters in order to have good stability. The female snap component is added uh, in the new denture or at chair side on an old denture and this is picked up and placed so that the snaps can be added to the denture making it really retentive. Now the metal housing will be picked up in the denture during processing and this little metal housing actually acts like a retention area for the little plastic caps to go inside. And it's these little plastic caps that come in various colors and the colors signify how much retention the cap is going to have on top of the metal locator. So as it snaps down it's going to have a certain amount of grip. Now our current case today we're going to be talking about about a seven year old patient who has an upper denture and some lower wiggly teeth. During the implant exam we had a look at the top arch and the bottom arch and the patient decided that they only wanted to have four locators on the lower arch. You can see the upper arch was quite deficient in thickness and actually could really benefit from some implants to maintain that bone, but the patient chose not to do this at the present time. Now the lower arch had some issues with wiggly teeth. Uh, these teeth were not going to be here for long, so we had to just start to think about how is the lower denture going to be retained. The implants were placed in a two-stage procedure. Uh, after three months they were uncovered and then some five millimeter wide healing abutments were placed on the regular platform implants. The flared shape on the five millimeter healing abutment acts to tack down the tissue so it helps to hold it down so that they're not slipping up over top of the abutment. Now once the patient returns after soft tissue healing, we're going to pick the size of the abutment based on the soft tissues. We need to know how thick the soft tissues are going to be. Ideally, we like the uh, locator to stick up about a millimeter after the uh, impression cap is on. So one of the ways that we can do this is we can place the impression cap on a particular locator and then measure things in the mouth. So one of the things I like to do in my own practice is take a five millimeter locator abutment snap on an impression cap and then we know that this is five millimeters and actually five and a half above the implant. So what we're going to do is take that to the mouth and start the procedure. Once we screw the locator five millimeter abutment on the implant we're able to measure down from the impression coping to see how far it is to the tissue level. So here we're seeing that it's four millimeters down to the tissue so we want to have one millimeter of space so that means that we have to use a value of three millimeters to subtract from that five millimeter abutment. So if we take the original five millimeter abutment and subtract three from this, this tells us that we need a two millimeter locator abutment in order to be one millimeter above the soft tissue. After trying the impression cap back on the two millimeter abutment, we can see that it also follows the same rules. So we, uh, we have this ordered through Nobel BioCare. You can order it through Zest Anchors, whoever has the actual uh, pieces you need. 
And what we're going to do is take that to the mouth and we're going to try it on top of the implant. And as you can see out of the mouth that this implant uh, abutment actually sits two and a half millimeters above the top of the implant on this internal connection. So one of the things that I like to do is then take that two millimeter abutment to the mouth. And there you have it, the abutment is one millimeter above the tissue. Now the patient had a, a scan after the implants were placed because she decided that she was going to want to have some implants placed in the upper jaw. So we're able to evaluate these implants. Uh, we can see that they're very parallel. They're in front of the mental foramens. You can also see that they're very level with each other and this creates a better placement for the locators to support the overdenture. Once we place the impression copings in the mouth and have the proper heights of abutments, we can see that this even works better. We can see that the occlusal view shows that they're equally placed anterior and posterior supporting the overdenture. One of the tips I'd like to share with you is this, uh, what I call the cotton candy approach to fabricating a custom tray. What you do is you take about an eight millimeter wide strip of base plate wax, wrap it around the impression coping, and then you place it back on the locator in the mouth. You take your alginate impression and then use this to make a custom tray. This creates a space for the locator caps to actually be on those areas when you take your final impression. Once you take your final impression, you're going to have a master model created. The master model will have some replicas inside the model and therefore you can start to create a bar or sometimes you just will make the overdenture over top of this. But the bar, if you do create one, you need to make some space for the locator caps because the locator caps will fit underneath it. Face bows and bite records will also be needed to fabricate your overdenture. But the neat thing is in the stabilized base, you actually have some locator caps which make this very stable when you're taking your records. So this allows us to go to the mouth and kind of get a feel for how this is going to fit in. We can see we can do uh, bite records and then get a denture set up with the teeth and then come back for try-ins to make sure that the occlusion is right and the phonetics are right. And So the wax up is certainly the stage where we work all that out and make sure the color is good on the teeth. And now the patient's able to really feel good about where they're going with this. They start to get a feel for the the retentive feature of the uh, overdenture as well. So after you go back, the lab is going to process this metal bar into what you've designed. So that's going to be picked up. And the bar actually has a lot of retention kind of grooved into it, you can see here. So this will just help to strengthen the, the uh, overdenture because the patient is a heavy grinder. Now the nice part about this system is that these metal caps will stay in the denture and so that the locators will be able to snap into them. And snaps will be able to be removed. We do this on a regular basis. It's like changing the tires in your car. And even the locator abutments, they could change, but usually these last a good long time, so we don't have to worry about that. So the denture is now going to be something that's snapped down, but also removable, allowing for them to clean and make the necessary adjustments. Once the snaps start to get a little loose and the patient's getting it out a little easier, you can use the locator tool to change the retention caps. So you take the inside resilient liner out using this little tool and then place a new one in. So now to quickly recap, we use a five millimeter locator with a compression coping on it. We put it in the mouth and we check out and have a look at how it looks over the tissue. Subtract one millimeter. That gives us what we have to subtract from the five, which gives us that we need, in this case, a two millimeter abutment. Once we place the two millimeter abutment on, we're able to get a millimeter above the tissue. Once again, this is Dr. Scott McLean, thanking you for stopping by and watching this YouTube video about the Noble Active implant. If you have time, just drop by www.drscottmcclain.com for some more tips about the Noble Active implant.